get rid of those annoying external TPMS screw-on sensors because finally there is an in tire, in, in tire, in in wheel, in the tire internal TPMS system for your RV or other towables, and that's what we'll be reviewing today. Let's face it, these screw-on systems are an absolute pain. Sure, there are some really nice and expensive versions, but when it comes down to it, it must be a long labor of love because to get these things off, you gotta work on it just to fill or even double check your tire pressure. There are flow-through tire sensors, but those still have their disadvantages, including the obvious added stress to your fragile valve stem if they ever get snagged on anything. I picked up this entire TPMS from Tucson. There are other variants for more wheels, but this model is the TPMS 4W, 4 standing for 4 wheels or trailer tires. This model claims to display, of course, tire pressure, the temperature, and, for some unknown reason, the battery voltage. Let's take a look at what's in the box. This is the display, also known as the Tire Pressure Monitoring Receiver, or TIP for short. Here is the receiver antenna on the back. It's light but has nice grippy ridges around the side which makes it feel like a better quality unit. This is the windshield suction cup mount. Here is a bag that contains the repeater, mounting hardware, and a sacred owner's manual. Here is the 12 volt power adapter. And at last we have the creme de la creme, the entire sensors and valve stems. Let's lay them out and have a better look. If you've ever seen your pressure sensors from your car, these will look familiar. This unit is generic enough to handle a couple of different ranges of wheels, covering wheels that have the 0.453 inch valve stem hole opening and a much larger 0.625 inch opening. The kit has the valve stems configured for the larger 0.625 inch holes, so we'll need to reconfigure the valve stems with the smaller hardware. Here's some decals that keep track of which sensors are in which tires. Right away we can see the instructions on how to correctly assemble the valve stems. These instructions are well written, so none of that horribly translated text nonsense. It reads here each sensor has a unique ID number to identify the sensor to the receiver, so we'll have to take care on our install order. It also says that the battery life is about 5 years when driven about 4 hours per day. There is other important data, so be sure to read through this thing before installing on your tires. Let's go ahead and get these valve stems set up for our application. We're going to assemble for the 0.453 inch hole. If you're not sure what your specific RV takes, a good tire installation center should be able to help you understand which stem size you need to account for. These seals are a bit hard to get off, so you really have to work at them to get them free. And we'll assemble the other hardware. There we go, one down, three to go. All right, let's get going on the install. Begin TPMS install montage. Note here that we're marking each tire with what sensor is installed on each. Now repeat three more times. Note that we are installing a set of Goodyear Endurances. But also note that we have balanced our tires, something I have done for years to help protect against unwanted vibrations transferring to the trailer. Begin repeater install. For travel, cargo, and other bumper pull trailers, the manual specifies that the repeater needs to be installed in this location. It doesn't say that we can install it in the storage compartment unless the application is for a fifth wheel. So we'll install the repeater in a centric low line of sight location on the exposed underside of the trailer tongue. Note that the repeater is waterproof. On my particular model, I don't really have any good options to just stick or screw this thing into. Hmm. Also want to keep this close to the battery to prevent having to run the wires too far. I think our best option is to install under the battery tray, but we'll need a sturdy way of mounting this here. I have an idea. Let's do this. Use 
use this stainless steel plate to give us enough surface area to work with. We'll simply cut this to fit. Begin steel plate montage. Perfect. Let's just fasten this down with a few self choppers. And since we've come this far, let's at least make sure this thing is centered. We'll install the adhesive first by wiping off some of the contaminants and oil with some alcohol. Now we'll stick this dude on here and then we'll drill out some holes to fasten it on with screws. The repeater has some adhesive as well as some mounting screws. We'll use both to ensure it stays in place. Let's reinstall the batteries and then we'll work on wiring up the repeater. These ring terminals that are pre-installed on the repeater are a bit large, so we'll use some washers from the bin of fury to help secure them. Okay, our installation is complete. Begin testing. We're about to embark on a 1300 mile trip, so this should give us a good chance to test these sensors out. To help us understand the pressure accuracy, I bought a more accurate tire pressure gauge, which claims to be accurate within 0.1 pounds, but personally, I see it fluctuating by about one pound. And to measure the temperature, I bought this handheld infrared thermometer, which is supposed to be accurate within about one degree. And according to this informational card, I need to set the emissivity to 0.95 for rubber, so we're good to go here. Let's get some baseline measurements to start with. 78.5 pounds, 50 degrees. 79.3 pounds, 49.3 degrees. 78.3 pounds, 47.5 degrees. 79.8 pounds, 47.5 degrees. Let's get this display fired up. A few things to note. One, I don't want to mount this on the windshield and the mount I ordered for Amazon was, well, delayed like everything else these days. So I'm resting it on the shelf for the trip. And number two, you'll see the display flickering a bit because of a camera frame rate and LED display panel frequency refresh rate mismatch. In real life, it looks completely solid. Number three, there are no readings coming in yet because the wheels are not moving. Once we move the RV a few feet and the tires start to turn, we should see the pressure and temperature data start to check in with the display. Okay, enough of this. Time to depart. Let's roll on out and keep an eye on the display. As we move forward, most of the wheel sensors are waking up and broadcasting their temperatures and pressures. We'll pick up a bit more speed and watch. Uh, there we go. Number three is now checking in. Apologies, this looks so strange on camera. I can assure you the display is solid and vibrant in real life. Another question to ponder, why am I still wearing these gloves? I'll snap a couple of photos to show you what the display actually looks like to the naked eye. Let's go ahead and compare the data to see how close we are. And as you can see, we're actually pretty close on our initial readings. We're going about 65 miles per hour, the tires have warmed up, and the readings seem to be holding steady. Let's pull over for a few minutes and check the physical readings of the tires. 88.2 pounds, 95.5 degrees, 90.4 pounds, 99.7 degrees, 89.7 pounds, 101.8 degrees, 91.6 pounds, 101.8 degrees again. Let's take a look at the results. All the pressures correspond fairly well. However, something may be up with the temps on the right side. Well, I'm not certain why we're seeing that much of a variance. We can see that starboard is actually running hotter than port side. We'll keep an eye on these. As we continue to drive along here, we can see that the temps are still showing about a 10 degree difference on the right versus the left side. And I still don't have a good explanation for this, especially because the left side of the travel trailer has the slide and has been on the sunny side for the past few hours. We'll come back to this topic a bit later and discuss in more detail. Okay, let's do another tire check. 88.2 pounds, 96.3 degrees, 90.5 pounds, 100 degrees, 86.2 pounds, 84.6 degrees, 88.1 pounds, 86 degrees. Again, we can see that the pressures are pretty consistent between the instruments and the display, and we can verify that the temperatures are still higher on the right side. Begin test conclusions. 
Now that we have these three data sets, we can come to some basic conclusions. One, the pressure varies by about 3% and the temperatures vary about 5% from the manual measurements. And keep in mind this is from my own instrumentation and not so scientific way of verification. For example, the outside temperature of the tread doesn't necessarily reflect the temperature of the ambient air within the wheel. And we really should have a larger data set along with some redundant measurement instruments. Number two, I need to look into the right side wheel temperatures. While I originally thought the sensors were calibrated incorrectly, which I suppose is still a possibility, other factors can cause this too, such as a worn or bad or dry wheel bearings. This can cause heat to dissipate outwards into the wheel and be a telltale sign of a potential issue. Additionally, there could be something like a brake shoe dragging against the drum. We'll look into these when I service it in the spring. Begin unsolved mystery. So, one critical question still remains. What does this thing actually do with a leaking tire? Well, let's find out. Let her rip, Orban. <sighs> <laughs> According to the documentation, even if the wheel sensors are asleep, as the pressure begins to change or drop, the sensor should wake up. Ah, uh, there we go. Now we're getting a reading that we've got a problem. The display indicates in red that the tire has a sudden pressure drop, as well as a familiar TPMS warning icon. We can also hear an audible warning tone that something just ain't right back there. Now we'll go ahead and fill the tire back up. And as expected, the display indicates the rise in the pressure again. Begin the... But I must mention a feature I don't particularly appreciate, and that's the battery voltage. First off, this is first and foremost a TPMS, and anything else not to do with the wheels and tires doesn't really make sense. The temperature is an absolute joy, but who asked for the battery voltage? It says that it's broadcasting the voltage of the battery for the trailer. However, I found it to be identical within the margin of error for the tow vehicle, and I already know what that voltage is. The product would benefit from dropping this feature entirely, or hiding it in a sub-menu. I find myself often sighing, waiting for the voltage display to move on to some more information that is actually pertinent to why I'm glancing away from the road. My recommendation is to drop this feature that probably no one asked for in the first place. Secondly, I would recommend simplifying the menu buttons. I find them confusing still after playing with them for a good amount of time. I can stop the scrolling and lock into a single screen, but aside from this, that's about all I can customize for the display. Additionally, I recommend that Tucson ships this with a protective case. I bought this external hard drive case from Amazon and it seems to be working alright. The antenna on the back makes it zip kinda tight, but it gets the job done. As an update, I did finally get my Amazon Basics dash mount. This allows me to place it up on the dash, or maybe somewhere down here on the center of the transmission tunnel. Begin conclusion. Aside from these two gripes, and in conclusion, I am fairly satisfied with this product. The display is easy to read and has a premium feel to it. Not to mention it has other features we haven't even touched in this review, such as having the ability to pair the display with multiple trailers, different tire pressure and temperature units, setting acceptable variances for temperature before the alarm sounds, etc. I've used it for over 6,500 miles this summer so far and it's been working absolutely flawlessly. But the best part is that I don't have to take off any difficult jam nuts or sensors just to inflate the tires. But for what it is and the price point, I don't think it can be beat. I'll be happily using this Tucson TPMS far into the foreseeable future. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing and giving us a thumbs up. Your feedback really does count. And, as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.